Welcome to Thank You Too Much, a series I do on my channel where I basically just talk about stuff that stay on my mind for quite a while. For today's episode, I am basically going to be gushing over and discussing the final Gintama movie, which is titled Gintama The Very Final Movie. So how I ended up watching this movie is that I got the DVD and from what I know and what I've seen, you can get the DVD on Amazon. You can also rent it on YouTube, which was what I tried to do when I first realized that YouTube did have the ability to rent it. But for some reason, YouTube wouldn't let me rent it. It was probably just like an internet sort of dean problem. So yeah, I didn't want to buy it on there because I wanted like a physical copy if I was going to keep it. So yeah, I just went on Amazon and got it. But yeah, I am very happy that I do have the DVD just because I am watching it multiple times and I can just watch it whatever. Here is like a spoiler free section. Also, I'm also going to do like an about section about the show for those of you who don't really know what Gintama is or just heard of it but never watched it. Overall, I really did enjoy this movie so, so much. It really stayed true and basically felt like Gintama. The music was great. I really liked the soundtrack. And the movie was filled with very satisfying moments. There rarely is anything bad about the movie that I can think of at the top of my head. It did do a good job with implementing different types of techniques to tell the story. And if you're wondering if they did a parody, they did do one at the beginning of the movie. I'm not going to spoil which anime they did parody, but it's pretty easy to kind of pinpoint which one they parody. And of course, they did do a good job at mixing comedy with the drama. Overall, I really did enjoy the movie. It was just, it was just very heartwarming to watch. So now about the show. Gintama was released in 2006 and it is a show that is heavily based on comedy but it also implements drama and that drama is especially seen later in the series but the author does a really good job at mixing the two. You've probably heard that Gintama is very hard to explain like one of the things that I've noticed when people try to explain Gintama is that they have a hard time explaining or pinpointing what Gintama is about, which is reasonable because Gintama does have a lot of stuff that happen, meaning that there is a lot of events that happen and a lot of characters that come through. But if I were just to give a brief synopsis, this is how I would say it. So basically the anime centers around our three main characters, which is Kagura, Shinpachi, and Gintsuki. And the three of them work under Odd Jobs Gin, which is which is a business that Gintsuki started himself. He is the founder of it. And they just go around doing whatever jobs come to them in exchange for money. And this anime takes place in the Edo period of Japan. However, unlike our reality, aliens or what they call mono end up invading Earth and cause the time period to advance faster than it would in our time. So that's why there's like spaceships and stuff like that. So basically the anime centers around samurais and aliens. That is pretty much the gist of it. But anyways, that's all I'm going to do for like the about section. And I am now going to get into the reasons why I just really love this movie. So the first thing is definitely the music. The music is definitely one of the first things that I noticed. So there is a total of four um, lyrical songs that are within the movie. The first three that are played within the movie are by Does. And usually these songs will pop up during the fight scenes. And then for the fourth song, it is by Spire and it appears at the end credits. And I love that they ended up going with these two bands just because when you think of Gintama, you usually think of Spire and Does because they both have memorable songs that were used for openings and endings. And then in regards to music, they did also use a very soft music when showing flashbacks on the screen which I really liked because this type of soft music really convey a distant memory. And also because it was soft music, it was very easy for the scenes between the past and the present to transition into one another without it feeling like abrupt. So yeah, the soft music definitely did a good job at helping the transitions. And then finally, while we're on the topic of music, so the thing that I liked about the final fight was that there was no music being played at all 
It was very silent. And the only thing that was basically kind of hurt was the talking and I believe like the sound effects. And it was really just like the best choice to not include music because this particular fight scene, just because of the way the scene was set up. And if music had been added, I feel like it would have like been distracting. So yeah, I definitely really liked that there was no music during that fight. That fight scene was very interesting to watch. They played with the perspective of things a little bit and kind of warped the scene. It is, when you first watch it, a little bit hard to follow just because, like I said, they do kind of warp the scene a little bit. But you know, once after watching it a couple of times, it does start to make sense. But I'm not going to knock that final fight down just because that because that warping of the scene does do a good job at conveying the intense air that is basically in that scene. And of course, I love how Shinsuke's spirit was still there even though his body wasn't his no more. Because that was very heartwarming to learn about that he basically was helping Gen fight. And I love that he was kind of manipulating his sword but yeah that was like really nice to see also to assist with this final battle flashbacks were used because they switched it between flashbacks and a fight to show a complete fight without it feeling interrupted and these particular flashbacks along with the rest of the flashbacks are flashbacks that we have seen in the show at least i'm pretty sure we've seen them i don't think there is any new ones shown but basically with these flashbacks, they are all of Gin fighting. And this set of flashbacks really shows the type of character and personality that Gin carries. And these flashbacks show Gin's ability to be quick on his feet and to be able to learn from his past mistakes. What I thought was an interesting theme that they did with the flashbacks because then it gives the flashbacks a purpose other than just being like a reminder of their past. They did the same thing with Katsura in that they showed flashbacks that aided to his character and the flashback that I'm talking about is the one where Katsura is picking up the rope that Gen and Shinsuke used. And with that flashback, it basically shows Katsura's ability to be able to pay attention to detail and also his ability to deceive people. And then with Shinsuke, okay, so when Shinsuke's tie with flashbacks, it was a little bit harder to see just because for me, I kind of brushed it off. But when I started thinking about how flashbacks ate at his character, I thought about the flashbacks of him basically taking up the genes of the heart. After thinking about it a little bit, I think those flashbacks do show his character in that he is very determined and self-sacrificing. I don't know if those are the exact traits. He does have like an extreme type of self-determination, but also an extreme type of self-sacrificing. So overall with the flashbacks, I really enjoy how they use them. Finally, with the final scene um, after Shinsuke is about to die, we get of course a sad smile from Gen that was like very hard to see because that is something we rarely see. Like we do sometimes see him give like a somewhat sad smile, but there's always like a underlining hope that lines his smile but with this smile that he does in the movie his smile doesn't have that like underlining hope it's like a very it's like a very grim sad smile it was just kind of hard to see that type of smile coming from him but we did get a good scene from this moment and that is the bolt scene the bolt scene was one of the most memorable sad cozy moments um, just because this is like their final moments together and I love how Gen kind of lets himself express his true feelings when he wished that him and Shinsuke had more drinking moments together and then with Shinsuke saying that they're not really that type of people to do that I don't know that scene was just very that scene definitely made me cry a little bit because it was just like I said a very sad wholesome moment but it was very lovely and definitely had like a very gentle feel to it, which is probably the reason why I think I really like it. But yeah, that is like a scene that I definitely think about. But that is not my most favorite scene. So let's just get into like my most favorite scene. Also, before we move on, I forgot to mention what my favorite flashback was. My most favorite flashback is definitely Katsura's just because I really like liked it. 
a lot. And I just thought it was funny that nobody can see the rope behind him. I don't know, I just really like that scene. My most favorite scene is definitely when Odd Jobs reunites. But that scene is just filled with wholesomeness, satisfaction. Like it made me laugh and I love how they tried to add to Gin's character. Especially they used old men to add to his character. Which again kind of calls back to his personality of being similar to an old man. And I also like how the old man were basically Gin's legs. I don't know about you, but Gin's legs are pretty, are a pretty defining part about his character for some reason. At least for me. I don't know. I just like how it was his legs that were like the main focus of that scene. Coming from this part of the movie, I definitely got my most favorite line from it. And my most favorite line is the one where Shinpachi is basically describing Gin's eyes. Which Shinpachi describes Gintsuki's eyes as being too fierce to be a samurai and too focused to be some thug. And of course that is reminiscent of how he describes Gin when he first meets him. And yeah, I just really loved that quote so much. Like I liked it when I first heard it. There's just something about that quote that's very specific and like gives a very specific idea of what he means. But of course we do see like the type of ice that he's talking about. But yeah, I just really like that quote. That is my most favorite quote from the movie and from the show overall. And of course I also ended up noticing something during the scene and the thing that I noticed was the type of point of view that the movie was taking place in. I didn't notice it before this scene but a majority of the movie does take place from a third person perspective which is kind of different from the show because a majority of the show does take place from a first person perspective we see the show through Odd Jobs' eyes, which is why we are able to understand their motivations, thoughts, and reasons behind their actions. But with the movie, I think they decided to do a third person point of view because when you're watching Odd Jobs fight, you're not really seeing their reasoning behind fighting. Well, okay. You're not really seeing their interaction with one another on an intimate level. You're not hearing what they're saying to each other and you're not getting their feelings which honestly i think is a good thing because then you can see odd jobs from an outside perspective you can see how talented they are you can also see how annoying they are to other people and basically you see them in the way the side characters do i don't know i just thought it was really interesting how they did that third person point of view another example where you can really see that third person point of view is when they are driving up the terminal we do kind of get both perspectives a first person and third person but the majority of the scene is from a third person point of view but the first person point of view does happen towards the end of that scene and you can kind of get the fear when they're driving up the terminal with the third person point of view you can see how unnatural it kind of is but also how amazing amazing it is because that is not a normal thing and that is probably like a once in a lifetime experience to see and basically you can just understand more how other characters see odd jobs. As I mentioned before the movie is definitely filled with very satisfying moments. One of the major satisfying moments is when Gin does get to meet his teacher. That is definitely really satisfying because that is a moment that has been kind of built up and then with the final part of the movie that is very satisfying because that whole section is basically feeling like a very packed episode of Gintama. I am very happy that they decided not to do a time skip because if they did a time skip it would feel very disingenuine just because Gintama does use time skips as kind of like a gag because at the end of the movie it just feels like another day to them. And yeah, I just really am satisfied with that ending because then it also goes with that kind of overarching thing that Gintama goes with, which is kind of living in the moment, a lifestyle that Gin really embraces. And we see him being satisfied with living in the moment when he expresses that the sky is clear. I love that part. That was a very satisfying part. But yeah, that whole like very ending scene with him and Tama was just very satisfying because again, that part does call back to their first meeting. And I love how Gen basically tells her that they're there to always wipe her eyes. 
because that is always sweet to hear like I that one is also one of my favorite lines while we're on the very end I am very happy that Tama did end up waking up though of course there was a part of me that did actually believe she was in present day Japan of course we learned that her data got corrupted and yeah that was definitely a really good reveal however because of this whole section there is a part of me that came up with the theory that I really do not like. I'm probably not the only one who thought about this type of theory when they saw it. Um, but I hate this theory and this is the theory that I ended up coming up with that popped in my head. And it's basically that Tama is in the future in present day Japan. However, because she wanted to be with odd jobs and all those guys, she corrupted her own data so that she is able to view herself, perceive her world as being in present day in the Edo period. And I really, like I said, do not like that dairy that just popped up. I hate it. It makes me sad to think about. I am just going to push that off to the side and pretend I never even thought about it because I don't like it. And we're just going to conclude officially that Hasegawa did corrupt her data and she still in the past with odd jobs and those guys so but yeah that whole final section well it's not really a final section it's like the second half of the movie basically the whole second half of the movie was very just satisfying it wasn't like my most favorite part like it is kind of like a dull moment but that's just because it's doing its job of trying to bring us down from the climax that happened. So now we're going on to the end credits. Those credits are definitely ones I am not going to be planning on skipping every time I watch it. Just because um, the song is really good. And two, I like how they set it up. So of course we have our silhouettes of the characters running through a field. But I like how they overlay images that come from the openings and endings because that made the end credits fun because I had a fun time trying to guess the image and trying to and trying to locate which ending or opening it came from some of them were pretty obvious like for example with Elizabeth with the umbrella that is from opening two with the Mr. Raindrop um, and then some of them were kind of a little bit harder just because there is a lot of openings and endings and some of the openings and endings do have like a similar theme to them so it's kind of hard to pinpoint which one it was but like I said I really love the end credits but anyways that is pretty much it about me basically kind of gushing about how I love this movie and like the reasons behind it okay there is like a lot more I could have said about this movie but I just went over like the big things that I connected with it makes me want to talk about more Gintama episodes um because I am re-watching Gintama again just because I got in the mood. There is like a couple of episodes that I do want to talk about. Like I just watched an episode that evolves around Gintoki and Kagura that I kind of want to talk about but I'll save that for a later time. But anyways thank you for watching and like and subscribe if you want to and I hope you have a nice day morning or night. Bye. Later. Mm -hmm.